So if you're watching this video, I'm assuming that you have gone through all the videos and you have solved problems and you have understood a lot about magnetism now. You know how to find the magnetic field due to a current carrying wire, whether it's a straight wire or a circular wire or wire of any shape, right? You can take a small elements and you can find the magnetic field because of that wire at an observation point. All that is good. One thing you must be observing is that uh, there is some similarities between our study of electrostatics and what we are doing here in magnetism, right? See, in electrostatics, there was electric field and now we have magnetic field. In electrostatics, we spoke about uh, electric dipoles. Here we have magnetic dipoles, right? There are many similarities between the two subjects. Uh, there is another similarity, which is like super strong similarity. And if you connect to it, then you would see that uh, electrostatics is just a kind of a different version of magnetism or vice versa, whatever. So this is called Ampere's law. Okay. But before actually understanding Ampere's law, we have to understand something called as the circulation of magnetic field. And after I have taught this topic completely, I've spoken about it. Then I'll try to draw that similarity, that analogy between both of them so that you can, you know, feel it more. So you know about magnetic field now, right? Magnetic field is a vector and you can have magnetic field in a space like a vector field. You can have every point in a space having a magnetic field. Uh, you know, uh, you can associate a magnetic field. That's what I mean to, to a point in space with an arrow showing the direction of the magnetic field and the length of the arrow showing with the magnitude of magnetic field, right? That's how you represent a vector field. Now, if in this field, you take any curve, take a curve like that, right? And you define a small element in that curve, say DL, right? Uh, an element like that. And if you do this, that you find the dot product between the magnetic field and the DL, B dot DL, and you integrate it over the entire loop, you get a quantity called as the circulation of magnetic field over that curve. Absorb that circulation of magnetic field over that curve okay so remember uh, well in electrostatics we had an idea called the flux of the electric field the flux of an electric field was defined over a surface remember that fluxes are defined for surfaces and circulation is defined for loops so just as in the case of electric flux where we just chose some surface right it was an imaginary surface and we had a field the electrical field Right? It was it was a vector field and we defined the electrical flux as E dot dA and the integral of that over that surface. Similarly, in case of magnetism, we don't take an area, we take a loop and we have a magnetic field there. Instead of taking the area element which used to take in the case of area, we take a DL element. This is a length vector okay, along that loop and we just find B dot DL, the dot product of the magnetic field with that DL and we integrate it over the entire loop. Okay. This is nothing but a uh, line integral. You will learn about it later, maybe not in 12th, maybe when you go to engineering. But this is called a line integral where you integrate a vector over a line, over a curve like that. Okay, Line doesn't necessarily mean a straight line. What we mean by line here is uh, a curve. Okay, So it should, should be technically called a curve integral. That's what we are trying to find. So this is the circulation of magnetic field over any curve. Okay, And what would this B dot DL will give you? This B dot DL is nothing but the uh, projection of B in the direction of DL multiplied with DL, right? So the integration of B dot DL just gives you a summation of this value of magnetic field at that point, which is tangential to that uh, curve multiplied by the length of the curve. That's what it gives you. You add up all such elements and you get the circulation of magnetic field over that curve. So now we have established that what we had as electric flux over a surface, right? Similar thing we have called as the circulation of magnetic field, but over a loop, right? So that is one similarity which you should be able to see, right? The second thing is, what did we do with this flux? We did nothing. We came to a law, right? We, we came to the Gauss law and we defined Gauss law as the flux of electric field over a closed surface is was equal to the charge enclosed by epsilon naught, right? So this this was a very useful uh, law. If you remember, we we used it to find the electrical field because of a lot of symmetrical uh, distribution of charges, right? And uh, Anand must have also told you that it is uh, as fundamental as the Coulomb's law itself, right? So this flux led us to understand the Gauss's law. Now similarly, the circulation of magnetic field over a curve 
now over a closed loop closed surface closed loop okay over a closed loop right which is equal to the permeability of vacuum which is mu naught times the current enclosed that is i enclosed okay let us understand this for a moment this says that if you take a closed loop okay you know that circulation of magnetic field can be defined for any curve so it can be definitely defined for a closed loop okay for you take a closed loop there's some magnetic field in the region right you take a dl element and you do this integration of b dot dl now that you're doing it over a closed loop you get that circle another similarity now that is equal to mu naught into i enclosed the current enclosed inside it okay let's say this value uh, let's say there's a situation like this okay where you have two current carrying wires like that then i can say that this integration of b dot dl will be equal to i1 plus i2 okay so that is what is the ampere's circuital law is so ampere's law states that the circulation of magnetic field over a closed loop is equal to mu naught times the current enclosed okay so let's uh, see how to apply this uh, ampere's law and what does it actually mean when we say that a current enclosed within a loop and how do you take that dl element and how do you actually do this this is like a very abstract could be very you know appearing very abstract to you this law so let us go and uh, deal with this in detail so now let's understand the ampere's law in much more detail so i have two current carrying wires here one is taking current in the upward direction another is taking current in the downward direction let's say the current in one is i1 and the in the other one is i2 okay now to apply ampere's law what is the first thing you have to do step number 1 you have to choose a loop so i chose a loop like that remember that this is not a physical loop it's an imaginary loop which we have chosen because we want to apply ampere's law and to apply the ampere's law we have to first find the circulation of magnetic field and circulation of magnetic field can only be found over a loop so i chose an imaginary loop like that okay and now i can find the circulation of magnetic field over this loop okay but what i'm going to do is because this becomes very difficult to represent in books so usually they don't give this kind of representation they turn the entire setup around like that so that the dot which you can see there right represents the current coming outside and the cross represents the current which is coming into the plane okay and the loop looks like that okay so understand this dot and this cross represents the flow of current i1 and i2 it doesn't represent magnetic field okay don't be like every place i see a cross there has to be magnetic field and every place i see a dot with a circle or cross with a circle it has to be a, a magnetic field or current it could represent any vector or need not be any vector anything which is coming outside or into the plane okay here we are using it to represent the current so the dot represents the current coming outside and the cross represents current going into the plane okay and there is my loop that step number 1 is done okay we chose a loop and we turn this thing around you don't have to turn it around because you know you don't do animations in your notebooks step number 2 would be what step number 2 is again to find the circulation of magnetic field i need to have a dl how would i choose what is the direction of dl like i could have chosen a dl like that or i could choose a dl like that also in the other direction so again this is also a choice so you can choose a direction of dl let let me just choose that to be the direction of dl okay so i have chosen a direction of dl and i have some magnetic field because there is some current carrying wires they will be creating some magnetic field in the region and now i am ready to find my circulation circulation will be integral of b dot dl okay now what that will be equal to the current enclosed and what is the current enclosed said so mu not times the current enclosed please i'm sorry so mu not is there and now you have to find the current enclosed what will be the current enclosed simple right i1 plus i2 that's it but would this answer change if i would have told you that i2 is flowing in the same direction as i1 or if i2 and i1 both were flowing in the same direction but inside would your answer have changed it would definitely change because it is changing the magnetic field around okay so the answer here that the integration of b dot dl is equal to mu not times i enclosed that i enclosed is not just i1 plus i2 you have to understand that one current is outside and one current is inside or into okay so one of the wires is carrying a positive current and another is carrying a negative current okay and how do we define which one is the positive current and which one is the negative current we define it 
using the direction of DL which we had chosen before. See, that is the direction of DL, right? Something we chose. Now, since we chose it, now, if you curl your fingers in the direction of DL like that, a thumb gives you the positive direction of current, okay? You just curl it like that. That direction is the direction for positive current. So in this case, I1 is positive and I2 is negative. So it will become I1 minus I2, okay? So don't be like whenever you choose a loop, all the currents inside, whether it's going outside, inward, no matter what, you have to just add all of them, no. Okay, depending on the direction of DL which you have chosen, a direction gets set up, which is the positive direction of current. And that all the current going in that direction, you have to choose it as, take it as positive. And the current in the opposite direction, you have to take it as negative. And then you have to write the current enclosed, okay? So in a way that uh, all the current going in the, the direction positive, the, the positive direction which you have chosen, are sort of like the positive charges in our, in our analogy of the electrical world and the one going in the other direction are sort of like the negative charges, okay? So now you, you can understand that this Ampere's law is very much symmetrical to the Gauss's law, okay? And this is the similarity or symmetry or analogy which we are talking about. And this is how you apply uh, the Ampere's law. So I want to reiterate the steps once again. Step number one is you choose a loop. It's an imaginary loop. Step number two is you choose a DL. This is again your choice, but with the choice of DL, a direction for positive current gets set up with your right hand thumb rule. And then you just write that equal to mu naught times the current, which positive is positive and the negative is negative. That's it. That's how you apply uh, Ampere's law to any situation. And now we are going to see how can we exploit this Ampere's law in some scenarios to get some meaningful results, especially get that magnetic field. We can use, like in case of Gauss law, where we used Gauss law to extract electrical field, right? Similarly, we can use Ampere's law to get magnetic field. And there would be some conditions uh, in, the in the magnetic field itself where we can exploit it. Like here also, there were some conditions, if you remember. We're going to discuss it now.